to set the stage, facilitating improv and doing all of these, um, you know, team building and um, uh, sort of stuff was always like, I guess you can call me selfish. I learned all of this in service of whatever team I was on. I never thought like in my wildest dreams that what I'm doing now is what I would be doing. Um, I you know, thought, well, my path is in marketing um, because that's what I was trained in. You know, that's what I went to school for. And I found myself on my career path of running a digital marketing agency. I was a co-founder, um, you know, had business partners and everything was going great. Um, you know, we're about three years into the business and all of this stuff that I was doing with play and team building, again, was all in service of of that team and, and growing that team. And yes, I did still perform and I facilitated stuff on the side, but that was just like a hobby. Uh -huh. And the business got a little bit rough, you know, as businesses do. And, you know, we lost some clients and it was a little bit shaky. And at that time I was now a father and uh, my son Garrett was almost one. And what ended up happening was I was, uh, leading a retreat in Nicaragua where you know I was uh, we brought some people out there and we did a service project um, you know we worked with a charter school out there and we, we taught some improv games and and we did some other stuff and it was like a play adventure retreat and again this was just like my little fun side project and and it was the last day there and I was looking at the sunset um, you know we were gonna go home the next day and I was like man my life is good I have a job that pays uh, pretty well. It supports me and my family, and it allows me to do this. Like I like, uh, I le like, and I felt like a sense of harmony. So much so that I got it tattooed on my arm. I got <laughs> harmony tattooed on my arm. Um, and you you might be thinking like, why harmony? Well, because on the other arm I had chaos tattooed, and I feel like I needed balance. So I was in a very chaotic time. Um, when I was in college, I know, like looking back, that was not chaos, but nonetheless, I got chaos and I was like, yeah, I feel like it's, this is life. Like you have a period of chaos and then you have harmony. Like you can't have one without the other. And I was like, I felt very at peace. Well, that, uh, didn't last very long. Um, I got back from that trip and it was my Monday check-in with my co-founder and he basically broke up with me. He said, oh. yeah, uh, he said, I, you know, I think we should go our separate ways. Uh, and he had like my buyout check um, and he gave it to me. And I was like stunned again, came out of left field, had no idea that was coming. And why well, I didn't even know that was a possibility uh, that that can happen that way. But, you know, um, he had the majority share in the company. It's all good. Well, you know, it is what it is. Um, well, Things got worse two hours after that conversation. So I told my wife, I said, yeah, so um, Anthony um, essentially kicked me out of the company. I have, you know, my little buyout check. It's not that much. We, we weren't a super successful company and that was never the goal. The goal was to create a lifestyle business that allowed us to live, you know, uh, our lives. Mm -hmm. uh, well, anyways, two hours after that uh, meeting, we get a call from my landlord. Uh, we had been renting a house and he basically said, sorry, uh, I have to sell the house uh, that you've been oh, renting wow. for the last three years. Uh, you have about a month. Oof. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And my son was, uh, it was nine days before his first birthday. And my wife is not working. Um, and I just lost my job. And we are about to not have a place to live. And so I'm at a loss of like, what do I do? Um, I thought like, well, I guess I just get another job. Um, because it, it was interesting because taking that leap and jumping into business uh, with my business partner, I was really scared at that moment. And um, this mentor of mine, his name is Peter Shankman. I saw him on stage and it was almost like he was talking deep into me. If you've ever had one of those things where you saw a TED talk on video or something in person and you're like, man, they're talking to my soul. Like he was telling this story about his, him taking a leap and he said, well, what's the worst that can happen? If it doesn't work out, I just get another job. And 
I'm here like three days later or three years later, like, well, I guess I get another job. And my wife, thank God she was the, like, it was interesting. Like she was the calm one in the situation uh, is normally the other way around. I'm normally like the rock. And so, you know, yin and yang. She said, well, what about the stuff that you've been doing with improv and play? Um, what about that? Like you get a lot of joy from it. Do you think you can just, you know, go all in on that? You know, make that, you know, sort of become like your full-time gig. And I was really scared because this is a new avenue for me. Like I don't have a background in organizational design um, or HR or anything like that. Yes, I had been teaching at that point. I've been teaching improv for, you know, for um, a good while. Um, and I've done a few team building events, but it wasn't anything like I didn't have any steady income with that. Uh, and I gave it some thought. Um, and fortunate for us, my parents uh, let us move back in with them and to give us uh, some breathing room so that, you know, uh, we can figure things out because it, I don't think it would like be very helpful for us to get an apartment or something like that. And they're like, oh, so you have a job? Actually, I, I'm sort of in between jobs, but you can trust me. Here's some money. Like, like, I don't think like that, that goes very well. Um, and so fortunate, you know, that I had uh, my parents, you know, and of course it was very self-serving for them because they just want to see their grandson uh, a lot more. So, you know, it was a win-win. And what ended up happening was I was forced into this, this new situation. And I said, you know what? All right, this is what I'm going to do. I, I'm, I'm going to make this work. I'm going to make this into a company. And it would be nice to say that, oh, yeah, then the bird came out and everything, you know, was perfect. And then, you know, happily ever after. No, it was very challenging um, in that, um, you know, I reached out to a number of people in my network and I said, hey, this is what I'm doing. They were very supportive. Um, and I got, you know, some gigs. And then, and this is the interesting thing, looking back, when you're put into a changed situation, like, I don't, I don't know what happens. Like you're just, I think I was in survival mode. And so I um, did anything and everything. So I was like, you know what? Let me just do this for free. Like I, I went and I called it a minute. Uh, I called it a complimentary recess. And I did a mini session, like a lunch and learn, um, uh -huh. you know, 45 minutes. Um, and I, I, I live in San Diego. So I just went to as many companies as I, as I could. And I said, look, um, my gift to you, um, if you like it and you see an opportunity for us to work together, that would be awesome. Or if you know someone who can utilize it, if you can give me a recommendation or referral, that would be awesome. If not, you know, it's all good. Um, and that was the catalyst of um, me starting to do it full time because the work that we do in improv, especially if you're bringing it to other contexts, like, you know, companies and, and aligning it with sort of soft skills and stuff like that. Sometimes it's hard to explain and it's better yeah. experienced. And so that yeah, was yeah, the yeah, for sure. That was the change that put me on this path where we're having a conversation today. <sighs>